My narcissistic mom tried to take my house from my pregnant sister but when she slapped Maine and threatened to lead to the cops, she didn't expect my girlfriend had been filming everything. Now they're both in deep trouble. I am a boy who is 31 years old, and I have a sister who is 28 years old. He has always been my mother's favorite child, but he has never been my father's favorite child. In the years that I was a teenager, my parents divorced because my mother had an affair with a former boyfriend from high school. Unfortunately, my sister was her little mini-me, and she has always been domineering, manipulative, and narcissistic. She has always presented herself in this manner. Additionally, it appeared as though our mother believed that she had complete control over me. When she snapped her fingers, she would give me orders like a dog. She would do this consistently. Despite the fact that it was humiliating, my sister never stopped supporting her. It should come as no surprise that following the divorce of our parents, I moved in with my father on a full-time basis, while my sister continued to reside with my mother. Unless it was about money, the two of them were very similar to one another, and they did not communicate with my father very often, in spite of the fact that I am more like my father. He was more business-oriented and started teaching me how to handle his field of work when I was 16 years old for the first time. I became fairly skilled at it, and after working for my father for a period of 12 years, I was promoted to the position of partner in his company. A terrible event occurred approximately eight months ago, and everything were going swimmingly up until that point. My father's immune system had been compromised for a significant portion of his life due to his heavy smoking habit, and he passed away at the age of 60 after contracting C-19 a few years before his death. After my father's burial, which was held in a socially distant location, I finally got to meet my mother and sister for the first time in years through a video call. It was my father's decision to be cremated and he was buried at a nearby cemetery. Hence, there was neither a body nor a casket there. Despite the fact that my sister seemed to be in mourning, my mother remained nonchalant during the entire process which surprised me. When she last saw my father, she yelled at him that he owed her more money and threatened to sue him, to which he laughed. She then threatened to start a lawsuit against him. In terms of alimony and child support, he had simply paid the minimum amount that was mandated by the law. He even made a contribution of $30,000 to the education fund for my sister. However, a judge's order meant that he was no longer legally had to provide my mother money 10 years after the divorce. This legal obligation had been lifted, not even close to being broke. She has been working at the same job for about 30 years. She is the owner of the old family home that we used to share and she routinely leases out two of the rooms in the house to use as Airbnb rentals. She does not have any problems with her finances. The reading of my father's will took place after the funeral. Apparently he was under the impression that if his habit of smoking excessively would not end his life, then something else would, and he even laughed about it on a video that had been recording beforehand. To a large extent, he left everything to me, including his home, all of his assets, and the majority of the income from his business. In addition to around $10,000 in cash, he left my sister a Nissan Altima from the year 2015. In addition to a few other goods that she had claimed to be hers since the divorce, my mother was only given a sum of $1,000. Additionally, I was given the remaining portion of it, and my girlfriend is currently residing with me in the house that my father had bequeathed to me. Following the completion of two years of community college, my sister moved in with her boyfriend and began working online part-time for a number of years. A heartbreaking miscarriage occurred at the time period, despite the fact that she became pregnant. Due to the fact that we had almost little communication with one another, and no one informed me of this, I did not become aware of it until after the funeral. When lockdown occurred, her boyfriend's job began to gradually downsize and soon he was only able to work part-time. This brought about a negative impact on both of their finances, to the point where he finally informed her that she needed to look for better employment as well because he was looking for a second job. After then, she fell pregnant once more. Despite the fact that she and her partner have taken precautions, Others continue to refer to her child as a miraculous baby. A knock on my door came as a complete surprise to me one evening. As soon as I responded, both my mother and my sister greeted me with a frigid reception. Both of them entered without anyone asking them to, and they immediately made themselves at home in my living room. A look of bewilderment was exchanged between my girlfriend and I, and I questioned as to the reason why they had brought themselves to visit. It appeared as though my sister was giving herself a tour of my home as she was laughing and looking around, opening doors, and opening doors. The request for a refreshing bottle of water was made by my mother, who had just sat down on my sofa and reached out with her fingers. After my girlfriend had gotten the water for her, I questioned as to the reason that they were in this location. It appeared as though my sister was overjoyed, but she chose to ignore me and proceed with her investigation of my home. A short while later, I was able to hear her exclaim, Mommy, it's perfect, from the opposite end of the corridor. Yes, she continues to refer to her as Mommy My Mother ultimately stood out and said, 
Well, I think it's time you did your brotherly duty, to which I reacted, what? I was surprised by her statement. My mother continued by saying, now that your father has passed away, this house ought to have been given to me because I was his only spouse. However, you are still able to make the necessary repairs at this time. It is possible for you to get a brand new home because you generate a lot of money. This one is particularly significant for your sister because she is the one who is actually carrying the baby that is on the way. On the other hand, if you are adamant about remaining, you could just live in a single room and pay for all of the expenses until you make the decision to leave. After reading a sufficient amount of Reddit, my girlfriend and I were able to determine where this was headed and what would occur if I allowed it to continue. I suppose you could say that we were mentally prepared for what was to come. I inhaled deeply and exhaled slowly before uttering out loud, that is not effing happening. Especially in my own home, you do not have the authority to boss me around. And yeah, I do make a lot of money, but just like my father, I'm going to put it away until I really need it, even though you don't seem to care about it. Stop, my mother yelled as she began to lash out at me with her fingers, just like she had done in the past. It is me, your mother. Because I am the one who brought you into this world, and because I am the one who holds authority here, you will do as I say. God is what I am to you. In other words, when I say jump, you respond by asking, how high? In all actuality, this house belongs to me, and your sister will be living here. The following is an official notice eviction. On the other hand, because I am a good person, I will give you two weeks to start packing your belongings and transferring the deed to me. I have a thought that goes something like this. This can't possibly be true. Then, however, I reached for my mobile phone and started making calls. Suddenly, my mother jumped up and asked, what are you doing? While she was standing there. I answered by saying, I'm going to do what I should have done as soon as this started. I'm calling the cops to get you out of my house. My phone was eventually knocked out of my hands as she started swiping back and forth toward me. After that, she made an attempt to walk on it, but I was able to grasp it before she could do so. That's it. If you don't leave, I'll force you out. My mother gave me a slap across the cheek and I returned the favor by hitting her back with a backhand blow that was twice as powerful, causing her to fall back down onto the couch. She yelled, how dare you, while placing her hand over her face, which was reddening and covered with makeup. She was completely taken aback by the situation. I went back to dialing my phone and informed her that I would call the authorities to remove her from the premises if she did not cooperate with my request to leave. I was in the middle of a conversation with my sister when she suddenly jumped in between us stretched out her arms and told me to do the right thing for once in my life and be a good big brother. I lost my temper and yelled out, Oh, so you think I'm a terrible sibling. I have been required to work for a living ever since I was a very young teenager. I was responsible for all of the housekeeping while you spent the entire day sitting on your butts, either playing video games on your computer or chatting with your circle of friends, and you would take the money that I had worked so hard to get in order to go shopping after you had already spent all of your allowance. You are nothing but a thief and a piece of a leech. Absolutely nothing is owed to you. I want both of you to leave this place as soon as possible before I dial the final number. For the first time, my sister started crying like a baby and said, Mommy, please make him stop. After that, my mother started giving her a death gaze, after which she began hugging her and caressing her cheeks. After that, she mentioned, you know, if you do call the cops, I can just tell them you hit me. It appeared as though she had become more intelligent. In addition, who knows, maybe I'll let everyone know that you wanted to do something far worse to a pregnant woman who was in need of assistance. It is not something that I believe would be beneficial for you to do. It was with a raised hand that I was able to interrupt her and say, just stop. During the entire time my girlfriend has been recording, in case you haven't noticed previously, this indicates that we have video evidence of you assaulting me first and then publicly declaring that you would lie to the police during the incident. I don't believe that would be beneficial to your reputation at work or for your Airbnb business which is relatively tiny. In the event that appearances could kill, my mother would have blown me up like a tactical nuclear weapon. Nevertheless, she quickly regained her composure and started pulling my sister into the room by the arm. My younger sister, who was behaving like a complete and utter child, managed to escape our mother's grasp and immediately plopped down on my front step while throwing a fit. Are you able to see now? I questioned my mother after giving her a quick glance. The result of the spoiled upbringing she had from you is this. After she had finished staring at me, I watched as my mother attempted to remove my sister from the front steps of my house. On the other hand, my sister grabbed to the handrail of the porch and cried out, you promised me, over and over again. 
As I stood by the door, I laughed and yelled out to each of them, never come back. At that moment, my mother reprimanded me and returned to the task of getting my sister off the porch. Despite the fact that it took her a few minutes, she was ultimately successful in persuading my sister to get up and leave with her. She referred to me as a cruel and heartless jerk who will go to hell for this. I chuckled once again and responded, there's also a special place in hell for liars and narcissists who try to manipulate others to get their way. I simply put up my smartphone once more with the recording and said, the clock is ticking mom. This caused my mother to tighten her fists and was ready to yell something more when I did so. Get off my property! After that, my mother accompanied my sister to the car, gave me one more look that was condescending, and then disappeared into the distance. I had the impression that that was the final chapter but my mother never let things go for good. A few days later, I started receiving messages from people I knew and family members who were using the internet. A good number of them were furious with me while others merely had inquiries about what was being placed. Due to the fact that both my sister and my mother had blocked me on social media, I was unable to view what they were saying on my Facebook account or see what they were saying. My girlfriend, on the other hand, was able to view everything because they had their profiles open. The entire incident was captured on screen and some of it was printed out. Both of their profiles contained entries that referred to me as a self-centered and cruel jerk who stole the house that was meant to be my sister's inheritance right in front of her eyes by paying off the attorney who handled dad's estate. This is a total and utter lie and both of them are aware of it. I called my attorney, who was also my father's attorney and a trusted family friend, and gave him copies of all the screenshots from Facebook as well as the video that my girlfriend had filmed on the day that my mother ordered that I move out of my house. My intention was to take it a step further, so he wrote them a letter instead of sending a simple cease and desist letter. He wanted to write a letter. I advised him to send it by express mail that required a signature in order to determine whether or not they had got it. It was on the same day that the letter arrived that my mother called me in an angry state. I warned her that if she and my sister did not remove all of the false social media posts they made about me and reveal the truth, I would send an email to her entire family, her boss, and upload the videos we captured of her online. In addition, I would sue her on top of everything else that I had done about the situation. She accused me of being crazy by claiming that she had only done what she did for the sake of my sister. She then proceeded to give a full-fledged lecture, during which she reiterated her belief that my sister still required my house more than I did. I made it abundantly apparent that I did not care what she believed, and I warned her that her career would be ended if she did not remove everything and reveal the truth. It was with reluctance that she responded, fine you win. After hanging up the phone he commented, you should keep the stupid house. At that very moment, every single dishonest post that had been made on their profiles disappeared. I was unblocked, and my mother presented me and everyone else with a half-hearted apology, explaining that she had hurried what she said because she believed that my sister required my house more than I did due to the fact that she is pregnant and broke. On the other hand, she admitted that the house was legally mine according to the will that my father had left behind, and she was aware of this fact before he passed away. Therefore, she had no right to attempt to claim it. In addition, my sister expressed her regret, but she virtually reiterated everything that our mother had said. She stated that she had just agreed with her beliefs and then blamed what she had done on our mother and the pregnant emotions that she was experiencing. The answers came in on both my mother's and sister's pages for a period of time, and a significant number of people were depressed by the fact that they attempted to seize my house. I received a lot of sorries and my bads from people who had previously believed her, but all it did was show me who was more on her side in the first place, because they were all so willing to swallow her nonsense. I could not believe it. Regardless, the majority of them were members of her family's side of the family. She was not believed by anyone on my father's family and they were vocal about their lack of belief. In the end, my sister and her boyfriend decided to move in with our mother in order to save money. Nevertheless, she kept them in the basement in order to maintain the operation of her Airbnb due to the fact that my mother barely wrote anything due of the trick she had played earlier. My sister started sobbing on social media about how she is unable to live upstairs. I am very certain that the two of them are arguing because all my sister did after that was complain online. Having made it this far, you are only getting started with what is ahead. The second part is very hot and wilder than the first. It is going to be the very next video that is uploaded, so if you haven't already done so, subscribe to YouTube with notifications turned on so that you don't miss it and give it a thumbs up as a backup. When the sister and mother came at the OP's apartment, the first peculiar thing that stuck out to me as being too obvious to look away from was the fact that they were there. Based on my understanding of the circumstances, the brother believed that the mother had just told her, 
It's a done deal. You're getting this house. And the sister had believed it for some reason. This is the only interpretation I can come up with. It is either the case that the sister is so naive that she believes that the mother has the authority to take the property away from the owner and give it to her, regardless of who owns the house, or that the mother simply lied and made up some kind of reasoning as to why the house was rightfully hers. I thought the mother's notion was a terrible one. She essentially told him, it's time to do your brotherly duty. And she believed that he would just hand up the house by that point. The father spent the most of his life working on this house in order to ensure that it would be a heirloom once he was able to hand it down to his son. On the other hand, the situation in which the daughter only receives the automobile and the son, the Ia, receives everything else is one that I could imagine being somewhat irritating. That may be a source of frustration. I am able to acquire that, but it does not alter the fact that certain individuals are given what that viewpoint cannot be rationalized in any manner at least not in the way that they look to be doing here. This recurring motive can be seen throughout the entirety of Part 2. Although Part 2 is rather lengthy, you can still observe parts of that line of reasoning in that section as well, in light of the fact that the girlfriend was filming the entire event in which they struck each other. I have a sneaking suspicion that the Eop's girlfriend was not recording their interaction at all. It is possible that she merely yes-anded the scenario, participating in the situation in an improvised manner and saying, yeah, it was recording the whole time. There was not an excessive amount of defensiveness displayed by the Eop and his girlfriend when the mother and sister came. To put it simply, they were perplexed. In conclusion, the mother's exact statement, which was by far the most peculiar component of the entire incident, was as follows. I am God, in other words, when I say jump, you define the height at which you want to jump. This house is rightfully mine. You are attempting to convince someone to give you something that you believe you deserve for some reason? because you were this person's previous spouse. Despite the fact that you divorced 10 years ago, it is weird that you're referring to yourself as God in the middle of an argument. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real life stories happening around you.